Good morning, good morning. It is the Todd and Aaron morning stream. Happy Monday. I know traditionally that's really an annoying thing when anyone says that because it means they're creepy and like way too happy when they say happy Monday, but sort of happy Monday. Irritating, isn't she? No, it's kind of a good day. A little irritating. Should we? Yeah. Let's go to that mountain camp. Ah, uh, the mountain camp. Mm -hmm. It really is pretty. I like the really fact is. that they always have this, this sun is slanting sort of like was the town psychologist. Oh, really? You had to do that to me again? To life with an yeah, I did. Really? Right. Really? Yeah, yeah. You really had to, to point out the audition tape again? Well, you weren't here on Friday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know! So, we played some old VHS tapes. No, don't, don't bring it up again. Thank it, you. It's, it's really, a, you used my audition it's a, tape? Yeah. I was 18. All right, here's the the Robert DeBry. You suck. Uh, oh, action the cam. The drone the shot. The drone shot. Look at that. God, it's so it's pretty. It's the fancy drone. That makes us have, like, the coolest traffic ever, doesn't it? Now, if we can just get it to deliver pizza here. It would be perfect, you have to admit. I think Google's been working on that, too, for some of their deliveries. That should be fun. We uh, were quite the Utahns this weekend. We were quite the Utahns? Right, Utahns. We went uh, hiking and such. Don't you remember when we mm -hmm. went hiking? And I took some pictures. And they, they were absolutely gorgeous. Well, here's, here's just a tease of what they, they did look like, because I thought... Well, we've never been... I, I didn't realize... So it's northeastern Utah, right? Ish. Snowville. It's on the other side. It's on the other side of, of uh, the Great Salt Lake, and we've never north. been there before. Right, Snowville, and then sixty miles. Here's just a tease of us walking and hiking. And what? I'm not carrying Zoe. That's not correct. No, this was on the way there. Traditionally, I'm always end up carrying. And our all the daughter. flowers are in bloom, so I put together something we're going to show at the end of the show. Oh, oh and our daughter and she her loves bugs. bugs. Yeah, except for I'm always the one that finds them during laundry time because emptying her pockets is some kind of an exercise in terror because it could be one of those flowers I'll show you or it could more. be like the first cockroach of spring, you know, so really my day is miserable. Before we do that, I have to tell you Guardians <coughs> of the Galaxy 2, I'm so excited. I knew this thing was going to rock 90% <coughs> approval rate on Rotten Tomatoes, $145 million, $145 million over the weekend for the box office. It's already up to $425 million dollars worldwide that's cool I think James Gunn's probably gonna I think he's said the director pretty much for the rest of his life he's given it's there <coughs> and Chris Pratt is adorable and you he love needs him. to follow the uh, the Todd plan which is you make a bunch of money and you go away well you know it's start probably, your own country well he and his wife Anna Ferris you know they've got their cute little boy and uh, he had some health problems and they just adore him so they've been doing a lot of work with March of Dimes and he actually talked about that he wanted to end his career and then go full-time into like doing some sort of massive philanthropic sort of charity thing. But there's people who Could don't... Could he be more adorable? Adam Sandler should have gone away because his last four films are... Uh, but oh, then he signed Netflix. a deal with Netflix for like $80 billion and mm -hmm. it's doing incredibly well. He's never going away. Let's okay, since we're talking honest. about large amounts of money, a couple of years back, everybody's doing the ice bucket challenge. You remember this. And you take a bucket full of ice water and you would dump it over your head and everybody videoed it, went all over the place. And Famous we're all donating people. money to, you know, for, for the, right. the whole point of it, for the it's, MLS. Uh -huh. What is that? MLS. Yes. It's the disease that, that we were fighting to get some sort of research for, and a lot of people. ALS, isn't it? Oh, ALS, thank you. I think you were saying something Excuse about me. a hockey league. Never mind, sorry, ALS. So, basically, I don't know if you knew this, but 7 million people participated in that. 17 million. 17 sweet. million, just got bigger. <laughs> the point is, is that, do you remember, after this thing had been out for a while, they uh, people started criticizing it. They kept going, ah. Oh, you wasted water. Oh, really? look at you. Oh, the energy to make ice. And they just started because, you know, You have 17, to criticize something. 17 million people doesn't mean it sucks. You know what I mean? If something gets popular, mm -hmm. well, we can't have that. So anyway, uh, they raised $115 million. And because of that, the very first drug has come out to treat the disease that's so it's wonderful. been approved by the federal government, and it is now being issued to people and helping them with their situation. See, that kind of clear-cut transformation of, like, social, you know, social involvement and, you know, the investment in what they're doing and the cause and having it go viral and then actually coming up with the money and then actually creating a cure. I mean, for me, that's... 
that's incredible that they actually did that kind of a rotation that quickly. Off of something so goofballish. Is that a word? It was genius, though. It was. And everyone played, and it was great. And, and social media going crazy with it. And people were then being, you know, it was probably started by mm -hmm. the NFL when they dumped the cool the Gatorade on the coaches. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the point of it, yeah. That's Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Anyway. Isn't it? I, I don't know. It made me very happy to see that because it's just so nice to know that all of that went to for something, for a good reason, for a good cause. All right, what do we have coming up? We have coming up, we have weather coming up, don't we? Well, a whole bunch of interesting things. There was like, there was a multitasking DUIer, we'll tell you about in a minute. Next, but yeah. it's it first of all brought to you by Columbus Travel. Columbus Travel, by the way, has a weekly newsletter that gives you all the flash deals. You can sign up for that at columbusvacations.com. Get out of town. Also brought to you by Executive Transportation, where our friend March will take you in one of his sweet escalades for an evening out or just to the airport. Uh, you can go to executiveutah.com and all Utah plumbing, heating, and air. This would be the time this week to start checking on your air conditioning and your plumbing. And of course, that's all Utah plumbing.com. Now, this fire hydrant thing totally cracks me. West Valley City, take a look. <laughs> now, here's the deal. First of all, this is yesterday morning, DUI. Courtney Drive. Guy drives his car into a fire hydrant, rolls the car on his side. Look at that. Fire, look at the guy's oh. it's, it's higher than the car. It's so faithful. Ooh, Steve, look at that. Steve did this beautiful thing of all of the water, the water montage. And I think at one point it even went into a slow-mo because there's nothing cooler than That is water. just a waste of water. That's what that slow -mo. is. slow-mo. But here's the thing that cracks me up, though. So the officers are arresting this guy. He goes, well, yeah, I was... I was drinking and texting at the time, and he was quite proud of himself because you got you know a bottle of beer in one hand, you got right. your phone in the other. This guy said, "I'm messing around," yeah, he'll, or something. He'll take care of the legal case for sure. Now here's the problem, though. After they finally managed to turn the water off, then they realized that a gas line had been ruptured and that it was leaking natural gas into the air. So they still had to close off the drive again, still shoo everybody out, and they had to work on that. So basically, He's the entire idiot. day was spent trying to fix. One texting, drinking. But think how much money dope. and time we would save if everyone had a crime and then the police catch them and they just tell them, yeah, I Just did get it. it all over with? Okay. And then now, they go to jail. Now, this makes me so frustrated. Utah Jazz, of course, they lost game three against the Golden State Warriors, which is a bummer because two of their players had kind of an off night. So that was 102-91. Uh, uh, fourth game is tonight, and I would like to take exception with a couple of the morning broadcasters who are going, well, if game five is necessary. Look, we're going to win tonight. Night, shut up. <laughs> shut up, okay? They're going to win. No, 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 no. Because everyone was being all snotty about the first round, going, oh, well, the Utah Jazz are not going to win. That's just ridiculous. They're not. Yeah, they did. And now we're gonna, we could win this. We could win it. I'm also, not, Real not arguing with you. Real Salt Lake also fell over the weekend. That was kind of frustrating. They uh, that was zero three to uh, Dallas, but Dallas is undefeated. I mean, it's right. it was very frustrating for them. When did you start knowing all about sports? No, I just get, those are the two I like. Okay, I, I, we have to me. talk this about Foothill. Foothill, come down. Foothill, everyone. explain it. I want to put out a little message to all the people who travel on Foothill in the morning and wow. in the afternoon during rush hour. Uh, and all the people who drive on 13th East, East, because this morning, or Sunday, late last night, they closed off the west and east bound entrance ramps to Foothill Drive. Just picture it. Yeah. Yeah. You can almost smell it from here. So if you're up by the U, you go to the hospital, you oh. work anywhere there, we are so sorry. Oh. Now they were trying to be all sneaky and go, well, you're going to have to go to 13th East. 13th East is a one lane road. Don't go to there. Don't. Go down to 7th East. You've got nice broad streets. Yeah, I know you have to go or, up from there, or, but it's not going to be that big a deal. Or quit. Drop out of school. Hey, the good news is... I don't think that's is, an option for most people, honey. The good news is it's only for four months. No, it's four years. No, it's four months. All right, I'm sorry. Now I'm it's going to feel you. like four. I am screwing with you. I'm sorry. It is just four months. But All right, what I, weather? They're redoing a lot of the bridges at the interchange there. We're having some problems there. Okay, three-day forecast. Oh, boy. Really? We just got rid of the rain and it's back? Low 70s. We've got rain showers possible today. Maybe a chance tomorrow and Wednesday, but, uh, you know, it is what it is, and it's going to be in the low 70s, so you can't complain too much. That's great. All right, so um, makes me so happy. spring cleaning, we are participating in it. And 
it's it's rewarding, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's it's nice. And this couple in J- Japan, they were doing it too. And uh, they opened a closet door, and well, we don't use that anymore. And except they did it in Japanese, and uh, <laughs> that's where they're from. And they said, "Oh, that? What's that in a box? I don't know." Well, what it was was one of these. It's an unexploded ordnance. Uh, actually, would ju- that be called a bomb? That's an a bomb. Unexploded ordnance. Yeah, that's an unexploded ordnance. Okay. And it's ja- It was made in Japan. It's a Japanese weapon, uh, explosive. And so they found and it. They had that in, in their closet. The closet. Yeah, right next to those shoes you never wear. Was there a reason that they had the unexploded ordnance? They're not sure how they got it. And so what they've done is they cleared out about oh 150,000 people around the area. I cannot imagine going in because it's unstable, and actually being the guy to go defuse it. Except I guess those people are. You know, By nature, crazy and kind of dig right? it, I guess, but still. And then the other thing is... So did it explode or did they get it out of the house okay? Well, here's the point. You go in, you've seen the equipment they wear with the blast shields and they've got all this stuff. It wouldn't matter with something this size. So I just go in wearing your briefs, <laughs> right? <laughs> or something that would hold all the bits together after it went off, like a net, a Todd net. And so... Right? Because it's like the suit's not going to help you. Because it's a big stinking bomb. I, those guys are so brave and, and so amazing. And they couldn't detonate it. You know how they always do here with a robot? Mm-hmm. And they either mm-hmm. shoot it with hard the wire or they water or they just put a little explosive on it and stuff like that. It was in a home in the center of a city. So they couldn't do that. Some guy had to actually... Gingerly pick up the unexploded ordinance. And he put it in a vehicle. I'm sure the driver appreciated that too. Well, they didn't tell him. I wouldn't have. <laughs> hey, uh, would you go down Suitcase, and get go to bag, go, go to the Air know. Force Base and grab me some uh, pizza? All right, let's let's move on. Columbus Travel. They, I love this because we were talking to get Larry Gelwick's the Getaway Guru on Saturday on Friday, and he was talking about some of the stuff that they've got coming up. It's amazing. They've got a trip to Cuba. I know. Cuba. I mean, I want to go on that so badly with you, and it's absolutely amazing. They have all these specific ways that you can get there that people have never tried before because it's still kind of restricted travel. Or if you just want something quick down to the Caribbean, or maybe you want something to Europe, they've got some amazing trips right now, and they were talking about some of the stuff that's inclusive. I'm like airfare, taxes, everything. So this is really a perfect time to go online. All you have to do is go to columbusvacations.com. You can sign up for their weekly newsletter if you're just looking for maybe a cheap flight in a hotel somewhere, or if you want the Full like bad mama jamma. Um, right. They can totally hook you up. All right, com- vacations. Coming up, not coming up, net. <laughs> we're next. Of, we're kind of awkward this morning, aren't naked we? Naked gardening. Next. We're brought to you this morning by Executive Transportation. Elegant service, professional style. Go to executiveutah.com. And All Utah Plumbing. Your home deserves the best. 24-hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com. And by Columbus Travel, the best travel deals on the planet. Be sure to take advantage of our April sale, columbusvacations.com. Did you know you can catch the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream any time of the day or night on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud, and GetPartDaily.com? All right, you We're ready? back, and this is pretty exciting. I was just talking to Melissa down at Christopher's, and they were going over kind of some of the stuff for their Mother's Day menu. And I'm really beginning to rethink what I want you to do for me for Mother's Day. And it might involve Christopher's. I would think so. It doesn't have to be just for a special occasion, though. It can be just like, I really want some, like, top-end meat and meat. Did you know they do three-course menus? Yes. Like, early in the evening that start as low as $17? I've been online. I know, right? Looking. Okay, so anyway, this is our plan. We wanted to say thank you for you joining us on the morning stream. And some of the numbers that have come back, like 400,000 of you a month we were kind of stunned so we wanted to say thank you um Why? this is like the best way we could do it so it's dinner for four at okay. christopher's and then of course we also have executive transportation they're going to put you in one of their sweet escalades drive you up drive you back so you don't have to worry about designated drivers now all you have to do to enter to win the christopher's dinner and escalade it, well you don't get to keep the escalade you just get driven at it just go to any one of our three facebook pages that would be todd and aaron get part approved or get part daily and just like the page comments and share to win and uh we'll be joining another winner on friday all right so around uh, our house it has been spring cleaning it 
We finally we, had to come to a negotiation, though, because we well, both get overly excited, and so we start throwing things away like we don't need that. All I'll right, never so need it again. Let's go through the point. The point is to declutter. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You can have a garage sale, but it's just to minimize. When I met Erin, uh, her rooms consisted of a piece of furniture and a dying plant. That's Not it. all of the plants were dying. Yes, sir. Okay, if you were the daughter of a stage five hoarder, you would only have one piece of furniture in your room too. Trust me on this. I'm the one who's hovering over our kids at Christmas going, do you really need that? We could just put that in the throwaway pile right now, right? Yeah, we could just. So the deal is, is that certain rules when you're decluttering, first of all, you're supposed to pick things up and say to yourself, does this give me joy? And if it does, you put it back. And if it doesn't, you throw it to the neighbor's backyard. <laughs> now, I've been doing this for a while, trying to clean up my garage. And I pick up, and I have eight feet of chicken wire. And I pick it up, and I hold it, and I think, does this give me joy? Not really. But I keep it. You know why? It's because I know at some point I'm going to have to go down and spend $8 to get more chicken wire. And it will probably be sooner than later, but I haven't used the chicken wire in about 10 years. So what happens when you pick up your abandoned bucket collection that you had collected over the years from Lake Powell? And what are we up to, like 40 of those now? Do you, do you pick up those muddy buckets and go, does this bring me joy? It does. I have no idea why buckets give me joy, but they do. So you go through, what about clothes? If you haven't worn something in how long? What they, is say, the... they say it's supposed to be like a year. If you haven't worn it in a year, then okay. you're supposed to throw it away or give it away. And I'm the, I'm the cook in the family, so I went through all my kitchen stuff, and there's all these pots and pans, not pots and pans, but baking dishes. One's got a happy Santa Claus face on it, and just like, get rid of it. And Doesn't... the whisks that are bigger than your head. There's some great whisks. Anyway, so you go through the whole process, and uh, that's, that's what we're doing right now. And so I'm going through all the vases and things because we don't have vases. I cannot believe you were even going to chuck this. So I said, well, what about this? This is a wedding gift that we got 20 years ago, right? And this is from, but this is from listen, the owner of listen, our radio company. Listen. Crystal. That's perfect. That's cut crystal. This is a Waterford crystal ice bucket with sterling silver tongs so that you can take them and go, hmm, sterling silver, and then you can place it into the Waterford Excuse crystal me. ice bucket. When is the last time you picked an ice cube up with one of these? Ever? Never. But you tried to throw it away, and I'm no, like, no. I wasn't throwing it's, it away. Okay. I was moving it. But it's, no, you were you were going to put it in the yard sale pile. And then I went and made you value it, and what did it come back at? That's an annoying sound, yeah. $375. And you were going to just stick that in the yard sale pile. Do you have an ice bucket? Do you want to win an ice bucket? <laughs> no, Aaron won't let me. Well, no, but it's a memory. It was the memory of our, our, no, I, of no. our boss who liked us, which I, was, you know, so rare, rare for most of our bosses. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> no, I know we'll probably never use it. Excuse but me. But I don't care. Are you thirsty? Let me get my ice bucket. It's water filled crystal, oh you know. Oh, God. And it's heavy. So that, ah. Uh. I think the reason it's interesting is because our boss is actually the kind of guy who probably used his Waterford crystal ice bucket. It's got to be in your consciousness because it was like, you know what they love? What we have. An ice bucket. And that's not enough ice for a party. Anyway. That's like someone who's drinking alone. That's what that is. That's for problem drinkers. That's if you're water drinking for, alone, you definitely don't need the tongs. Right? You just, <laughs> just mix the drink in the bowl. Um, I want to talk about something that uh, happened this weekend, and I'm sorry if you didn't participate. It's called naked gardening. Was this a thing? Did, was there a plan that I didn't know? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> If you're just listening today, we have the most epic picture of uh, the Radical Gardens, and uh, they're all posing with carefully placed produce. On a tractor. And it's hysterical. Now, you're going to say, <laughs> how did this come to be? And basically, um, you know, you had, uh, you had uh, some people going, you know what, gardening, it's back to the earth. We're kind of hippies. Why don't we drop our trow and, uh, and grab our hoe and go into the field and do some gardening? And, you know, it probably sounded like a great idea, except when people started bending over and weeding. 
Ew. I can't help but think these are people that either really enjoy being nude or they've never gardened before. Because when you're gardening, think about it, it's not even just the bending over. You're in your <laughs> knees and all the dirt, and you got rocks digging into your knees, and, and there's all these potato bugs and all this stuff like starting to crawl up your leg, and, and it, the sun's beating down on your unsunblocked bare back and your bottom, and it, it just doesn't, in concept, perhaps, it seemed exotic and fun. But I'm just thinking in reality, based on my own experience with gardening, it would be a singularly uncomfortable experience. I, I can only think, well, you're kind of snooty about that. I, I kind of think that there's only one group of gardeners that would not participate, and that would be the raspberry gardeners. Because that, my friends. Raspberry bushes. Roses. Stickers. Roses. Like it only would take one to make you not like to be nude again. In the garden. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe that would be a learning experience and that the rest of us wouldn't be forced to watch it. Go to their Facebook page for more information. Radical Gardens. <laughs> All right, now everybody's traveling right now, and there's a lot of flights getting booked, and everyone's starting to think about what they're going to do for vacations right. and putting everything together. And no, they, for us mothers, this means it's the gigantic flotilla of toys and all the stuff that you've been stacking up for months to entertain your children on the plane so they don't enrage fellow passengers. Now, we learned from the, the getaway guru that you're supposed to, like, a tip was to take pictures of your, uh, of your passport, passport yeah. and then send it to the cloud so you have it there. And take a picture, you have it on your phone, but if your phone gets lost too, now you have it on, you can pull it up and it'll take a couple days to get a new passport. But temporary. there were actually some interesting things. They asked a bunch of airline people, like, what are some of the tips that people are, are not seeing, that, that, that they're not figuring out? And the number one, do not put your address on your luggage tag. Why? Because they said that's basically screaming to a thief, hey, I'm not home. Why don't you go break into my house? Because I'm in Miami right now. So right. just go in and see if you can find anything you like. Just stroll through the house. you got plenty of time. So what do Maybe you take a nap, have a sandwich, then steal everything I own. But some people go, we don't, oh. We don't have anything except for the Waterford Crystal. Well, ex except for a lot of people started putting like their neighbor or their friend's address on their luggage. So they go rob them? So they wouldn't rob Wait, them no, instead. That, that exactly. So they said, yeah. ideally put a work address and a mobile number on it. It, that makes a lot more sense. That does. Um, number two, have a photo on your phone of your bag. If it goes missing, then you can just show it, and then they get they can go. Oh, here's the oh. dimensions. This is the size. Make because saying that you've got like a black, you know, tourister bag really doesn't help anybody. I made so I've, does everybody. I made else. the mistake once. We went back to Maine. We flew Delta. Uh, it's about an hour and a half, two hour drive from Logan International Airport to oh, the family yeah. cottage on Square Pond yeah. in Maine. And I got there, and I opened it, and it wasn't my bag. It was the identical bag, but I didn't look I at the I think you ticket. had my breast pump and all of my formula bags in there, didn't you? Yeah, she wasn't even pregnant. Um, <laughs> what is wrong with you? It's early. It's Monday. Hello. Uh, where was I going? Oh. I don't so, know. So I call Delta, and I say, uh, I'm an idiot because I grabbed the wrong bag. And they drove someone up. This is before GPS. They actually drove someone two hours to this little cabin in the middle of nowhere to exchange bags. I thought that was pretty impressive. Right. So see, they get credit for that. Um, this is another one that I thought was kind of clever. Put at least one business card inside your suitcase. Because at some point it's going to be lost, and if they have to open it up, like maybe there's no identification, they'll open it up and you'll get it back. They'll go, oh, here's a business oh, card right, right. with their information. Right. Or this one's really cool, um, and this will save you a ton of money because every one of us has done this mistake. Weigh all your luggage before you go to the airport because it's always a nasty surprise finding out that you owe like $300 in luggage fees because you didn't realize just how heavy your stuff was. And you were going to the Anvil Collection uh, Well, of course. You know, conference. all the anchors. Yeah, exactly. And different airlines have different allowances. This one I thought was really interesting because I always see celebrities like going through the airports and they're taking pictures. They're always wearing backpacks. They see people are always choosing backpacks now instead of wheeled suitcases. Why, why is that? Because if you have to run to get to a flight oh, or something like that, you're not dragging your wheeled suitcase right. behind you. It frees up your hands. So you're, you know, if you've got to grab kids or you have to grab something else, you're ready to go. Have you seen the, the luggage that has a little motor in it? You sit on it and steer it, and it takes you to your gate. Oh, we have to get one of those. I would so push those people over. Are you kidding? I really would. Zachy t would totally they're dig that. They're just like, ee, they're just going through the airport, weaving, weaving, Are these the weaving. same people who like drive rascals in, in the supermarket? I don't know. It probably is. This one's a smart idea. I didn't think of this. If you're desperate and you don't have the baggage allowance, put all the heavy items in your carry-on. 
because they, they don't weigh, weigh it. Yeah, they weigh your check bags, but they never weigh your carry-on. I like the computer one, too. If you do a laptop, if mm -hmm. you carry a laptop, uh, even if you don't have a laptop in there, you can put stuff in there because it's not counted as a carry-on. Exactly. And this is actually interesting. If you can, grab one of the fragile stickers. Believe it or not, they actually do pay attention to those, and they handle it more carefully. Ace Ventura, <laughs> private detective. Isn't that the one where he's the FedEx guy and he just kicks that box down the road, smashing it against cars, and then he delivers it really nicely. Well, see, that was something. And it's marked fragile. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's, you know. Okay, as we're going into this, let's just, actually, we should probably talk to Larry Gellwicks, the getaway guru, because right. he was pretty interesting. There he is, travel. I've been very excited for the Getaway Guru to come back. This is Larry Gelwix, of course, from Columbus Travel, the master of all things getting out of the house. But for a lot of people who missed the April uh -huh. sale with Columbus. That was a big sale. Oh my gosh, we're so jealous. Yeah. You know, there were a lot of cruises that were like, I would have liked to have gone on that, but now I've missed out. Is there any more chances? What should I do? There are some questions that the savvy traveler really should ask himself or herself before we book a cruise. Okay. Why am I doing this? What is the purpose of it? Mm -hmm. There are basically two decisions that you have to make in the purpose of a cruise. Some cruises are destination choices. Mm -hmm. Others are experience choices. My primary purpose is I want to see this area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Other cruises are, I want a great experience. And yeah, I want a cool destination. Right. But. I want, I want an experience. Is it a destination oh, or just okay. a great right. experience? The next question is when? Can I go anytime or is it date specific? I have right. certain vacation days. So the purpose, when? And what's your budget? Mm -hmm. You know, there's no right or wrong answer to that. And all of us want a good deal, but don't focus exclusively on the price. Right. As important as that is, Focus on value. What am I Precisely. getting, Aaron, yeah. for my for my purchase with that? Now, here's where it gets really important, is choosing the cruise line. This is where a travel professional at Columbus Travel and Bountiful can be of immense help. Not all cruise lines are the same. Right. Now, the way to determine the target audience of a cruise line is go to their website. Look at their brochure. What photos are they showing? Recap what we've covered. We've okay. covered, uh, don't don't just look at the price, look at the value. Right. Uh, is it a destination or an experience? Right. What is your budget, cabin category, the cruise line? Right. Now, there's some great deals out there in May and June at Columbus Travel and Bountiful. Really? Let me give you some real quick Okay, ones. all right. Uh, rates do vary by departure date, cruise taxes and error are additional. A seven-night Alaska starting at $549. How about you said you wanted wow. to go to Europe, yeah. the Mediterranean. Yeah. A seven night med cruise for 649 bucks. But I got one better because I know you love Norway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine days in Scandinavia, oh. $649. This is at Columbus Travel for May and June dates. Yeah. Rates do vary by the departure date. That's cheaper that than rent and mortgage. Well, that Scandinavia cruise, <laughs> right. 72 yeah. bucks. Right. A day in Scandinavia. And this is for food and activities and a really beautiful boat. And all okay, so more ships. information on this. Where do they go? Columbus Travel and Bountiful, 800-373-3328. Or better yet, online at columbusvacations.com, columbusvacations.com. All right, uh, show the drone. Do Show the drone. To, we have drone, don't we? Do we, we have the drone? Do we have drone? Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm We're very gonna, excited. Uh, See how beautiful. Okay, the drone's coming back along with $1 million in antiques, and we will explain. And it all turns out poorly. As that, always. Coming up next. Merit Medical. Why work for fast food wages when you can start at Merit for a whole lot more? Merit Medical. Great products, great people, a great company. Learn more at merit.com forward slash careers. The Law Offices of Robert J. DeBry and Associates with offices in Salt Lake City, Sandy City, and St. George. Check them out at robertdebry.com. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is actually available anytime at gepharddaily.com. Just click on the Todd and Aaron page. Fast food wages when you can start it.
I think I think oh, we need a crazy. danger drone. And I prefer the concept of stunt drone, but the, isn't that amazing? But look how perfect it is. I mean, just the positioning. Now you can—they're never going to have to use helicopters for anything again. I mean, unless you're airlifting people for safety. Well, that would be important because the drone's really not capable of that part. All right, part. so I want you to think about—you have a family heirloom, mm -hmm. and it's—it's it's, uh, pretty pricey. It's—it's mm -hmm. it's been evaluated, and the guy goes online and he finds a buyer, and he says, "You know what? I don't care about the family," and he takes this bronze pot of his, and he says. Um, I put it online. He gets a buyer, and then he says, "Okay." He takes the brown pot mm -hmm. and he puts it in a box. Okay. And he wraps it up a little bit, taking care of it, you know, safety first. And he mails it regular delivery, like the mail. He didn't insure it or anything. Oh, he did. He insured it. Okay, that's good. Um, uh, the problem is, uh, let me get this number straight, shall we? All righty. So the number is nine hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. Oh. That, that was a good bronze pot. That, that's like a million dollar antique bronze Three, pot. 3,000 years old. Oh, well, that would be one reason why. Right. God, I hope he used bubble wrap. That's all I'm saying. Well, he spent $130 to transport it. And guess what it looked like when it got there? Like the Ace Ventura fragile package we were discussing earlier? Yeah, it was ripped open, and it said fragile. Ripped Aww. open, crushed it came in pieces, but like you said, there is a shining light to this because he really because it's a three thousand dollar bronze pot that's now destroyed. Right, but he didn't insure it like you asked. Okay, yeah, but I would. Who cares? A three thousand dollar year bronze pot is gone. No, the the maximum amount for the insurance of four thousand three hundred dollars. You're kidding me. So just a little discussion here. Aaron, you join in. You have a million dollar pot, right? Oh my God. And let's say it has to go to Alaska because they're big there. Mm -hmm. Would you ship it? No, I, I would put it on my lap and I would fly it there in underneath my arms like a baby. Right? You, you would take it. Why it's, would you do that? It's a million dollars. I wouldn't even take it in a car. Because you could have an accident. You're right. You get on a plane safely, like a football. That's adorable. He insured it for four thousand eight hundred dollars. Well, it had a maximum on it. Even the bubble wrap it was worth more than that by then. This is nice, <laughs> but I still wouldn't ship it. Sorry. Uh, what else are we going to talk you know, about? He almost deserves it at that point. Um, oh, basically, our adventures over okay. the weekend, and once again. We have the best friends in the world. Jen and Ryan, we love them dearly. Jared and Jill. It was their ranch. They said, why don't you come out for the weekend? And we went, that'd be awesome. But and Jared, yeah. and uh, now Ryan and Jen had been there before, so they left us instructions. Okay, so first of all, where is it? North of Salt, the Great Salt Lake. Uh, if you know where Snowville is, you and go... And sort of east-ish. You go an hour south, and that's what it is. It's in the middle of nowhere. If you saw nowhere, it was there. Okay? <laughs> Couple out buildings built on 300 acres surrounded by BLM land. I think I still have his directions here, as a it, matter of fact. Oh, do you? Pull them up. Uh, yeah. And so, so the, the problem, the directions were incredibly vague. And we couldn't understand. He's like, oh, we go down here. He didn't even tell us which side of the highway to turn, left or right. Well, part of the thing, though, is... is Did he, you find he, it? Yeah. It, it, then he says, uh, when you get to there, there's going to be... I think he autocorrected. There's a red... Southeast Street, I don't know what that word is. Okay, so but he says, and then just keep driving till you see signs of life, and there we are. Okay, so here's the problem: we're driving a nineteen, we're dragging a nineteen sixty nine travel trailer, uh, and we're driving down these roads, and there's nothing but clay dust. It is, we're just leaving the smoke trail behind us. We tried four different ways to get in to find this place. The problem is, he didn't say how many miles in it was. Turns out it was 10. Uh, yeah. We would have never gone that far because we're looking for civilization. The reason this happened is because he was on a different carrier on his phone than we were, and he was being vague because he knew that he had sent us the map. Yeah, he goes, oh, I've dropped a pin. You just have to follow that. And it's it had, ready all, to go. had all the street numbers. Yeah, it was perfect. There was no streets. It was just a rugged road going off an edge of a cliff. And so we got rescued, and we got rescued by the people who owned it, the place, because they were just arriving, and they saw this 
dust cloud traveling across <laughs> in an opposite direction. This barren wasteland, and then we went the other way, and we, the, and so that's how they found us and they rescued us, and we went there. So bad directions, not so much. Vague, yes. Why? Different carriers. We never got the map, and we didn't have service than they did. So Ryan, uh, we we apologize. We for, know you tried. We know you tried. We just had the wrong carrier for our phone. And apparently we're not that bright, but now I think that of, was a given. Let me explain what it was like. It's like uh, almost desert. It's it's there's rocky knolls and crev crevasses, <laughs> and uh, and there was. Why did that make me think of naked Crevasses. gardening? Crevasses. Uh, don't. Don't. Okh no. Um, and so sagebrush and stuff like that. So like hawks and eagles and badgers and lizards and badger. bunnies. So and I thought we'd put together. This is a uh, this is uh, Todd and Aaron's home movie. Enjoy. The nature and, montage. And by the way, yes, yes. And we'll see you tomorrow morning on the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream on GetPartDaily.com. Mm -hmm.